and undermine uh, the, 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 the agenda that you have. And, and allow me, Madam Chief Justice, you know, to, to appear before you on this matter. And, <laughs> and I hope I am not abusing the court process, you know. On this matter, you know, I'm just trying to, uh, in, a, in a very simple way, to put my thoughts across so that, you know, maybe the court can apply its mind to it and help us, you know, chart this course as, as Kenyans. Because uh, it's me today, it's somebody else tomorrow, it's the next person the next day, and we all must uh, think about this. So that particular matter it, it, it sometimes uh, uh, is a matter that, uh, that, uh, uh, that, that informs some of the things that we do. And I, I am a layman, but we're told that the court also makes decisions. In, sometimes they have to factor in public interest. Where does public interest, populism, playing to the gallery, where is that? You know, how, how, do we, how do we nuance it so that it is managed properly and uh, we, don't, we, don't drop the, we don't drop the pole? So th this is uh, just thoughts, uh, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm really happy that uh, uh, Madam Chief Justice has, 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 has said it clearly that we, we, need to, we need to consult more, you know, as uh, institutions. What has become clear during the course of constitutional implementation and in the life of the Supreme Court is that notwithstanding the, people, the principle of separation of powers and the need for checks and balances, cooperation between organs of government and among state institutions is necessary, is also desirable, and this is for the promotion of national interest and constitutionalism. And that brings me again to the matter that was canvassed by my deputy here. Um, and um, my sister Njoki um, spoke to it and said, we need independence, we need to avoid overreach and interference, you know? overage and interference, you know, that kind of thing. Now, um, we must be careful as uh, the executive to avoid overage and interference. Because we always talk about judicial independence and it's a fundamental principle of our Constitution. And there is a remedy for executive overreach because the judiciary will do something about it. But what happens when we have judicial overreach? and judicial, independent, uh, judicial interference. Who, who will help us to, to resolve it? You know? I, I know these are, these, are, these are, and I'm not, I hope I'm not making difficult things here. I'm just asking myself as a layman, and maybe they, they I now have a good uh, deputy, a professor. Maybe he'll help educate me when we have some time. <laughs> but again, I would, um, I would really want to ask ourselves, and uh, so that as we restrain ourselves as the executive, not to interfere, not to overreach on matters that are in the purview of the judiciary or other arms of government for that matter, I think there is an equally very high responsibility on the path of the judiciary to restrain itself, and I think the Chief Justice here said so, to restrain itself on matters 
that are in the purview of other arms of government so that we can have um, the committee of working together and uh, the interdependence while respecting our, um, our independence or the independence of other arms of government. Um, such moments are rare, you know, when, when you have the, the ears of the judiciary. <clears throat> um, I think I have said the, the three things that I really wanted, uh, just as a citizen, to, you know, juggle the minds of our judicial leaders and judicial officers um, so, so that we can, we can, uh, we, we can work together in, in this space. <clears throat> Effective collaboration, this is what I'm talking about, in the national interest. And you had my deputy say, you know, there is public interest, which sometimes is about maybe what the social media has said. What, has, what, social, does, what the social media has said, is it public interest? What is it? You know, we, we need to, there must be a balance. And then there is national interest. These are propositions that we need to think about so that uh, we can carry it along in our jurisprudence and uh, also in our life as a nation. No single institution or organ is entire of itself or viable in isolation. I'm encouraged by the increased confidence with which various arms of government are exploring areas of partnership and collaboration. And by so doing, we are breaking long-standing barriers to unlock the power of institutional synergy. There's a lot that we can achieve through institutional synergy, finding ways that we can uh, make all the institutions work. And I agree with the Chief Justice that we must build strong institutions that can withstand even weaknesses of individuals. That in, uh, sometimes, uh, um, because we are human, sometimes in individuals may um, be weak, but if you have strong institutions, they can even carry uh, weak people across or stop uh, tyrants also. Uh, you know, strong institutions can stop rogue people from also taking advantage of the system. And as we have consistently and repeatedly demonstrated, such partnerships are beneficial when pursued transparently and in public interest. Through this approach, the executive has found opportunity to engage the legislature and judiciary over the national budget and also to support the expansion of judiciary's infrastructure among other consultative endeavors. And today morning we had a conversation with the Chief Justice and uh, the leadership of the judiciary on some of the aspects of modernization of our judiciary. And I must say, with a lot of clarity, that the judiciary has been phenomenal in its application of technology to deliver on its mandate. They have done a very commendable job. That um, e-filing and making sure that even decisions can be made um, online has really enhanced the efficiency of the judiciary. And the rest of government need to come along. Um, and um, I hope that uh, the judiciary will assist the other arms of government in uh, appropriating and using technology to deliver on, uh, on their respective mandates. I know, for example, that uh, KRA is working on how to deploy technology to eliminate, you know, um, uh, contacts and uh, uh, corruption in judiciary, in, in, in the collection of taxes, 
and, and I really want to implore the judiciary to assist the other arms of government in using technology so that they become as efficient in collecting taxes as you have become efficient in uh, executing your mandate. Um, we remain committed to partner with the judicial and legal fraternity in building a more accessible, empathetic, and efficient judicial ecosystem which delivers justice to all in a timely, fair, effective, and accessible manner. Each branch of government plays an important role in supporting the Supreme Court as it leads the judiciary in delivering justice. We are committed to working alongside the judiciary to continue developing a judicial system that honors the aspirations of Kenyans and upholds our constitution, reinforcing the foundations of our democracy. We must work in unity and with a singular sense of purpose to ensure that the Supreme Court remains a shining beacon of integrity, a trusted guardian of our rights and freedoms, a champion of the rule of law, and a leading force in producing progressive jurisprudence, not just in our country, not just in our continent, but also globally. Beyond serving as the ultimate arbiter, the Supreme Court is a driver of national development. Its decisions shape our institutional framework, define our socioeconomic landscape, and guide our path towards an equitable society where justice underpins our development. And I would implore us as we, as we make decisions, we must keep this society equitable, Kenya equitable. The Constitution demands of us in Article 43 on economic and social rights. How do we bend backwards to carry everybody on matters health, on matters housing, water, and access to public services? How do we make sure that we leave nobody behind? I think as we make those decisions, whether in our judiciary or in our executive or even in the legislature, we must keep an equitable Kenya in, in, our, in our thinking. In guiding our institutions to articulate the national values and principles of government as coherent parameters of sustainable development, the Constitution designates the Supreme Court as the umpire charged with auditing policies to ensure that they promote inclusive growth and economic em empowerment. When it supports access to essentials like health, housing, and education, it strengthens the foundation for inclusive policies that uplift communities and break poverty cycles. As recognized and amplified by the Supreme Court itself, the greatness of our nation is based on fidelity to the Constitution and the rule of law. Our commitment to constitutionalism and the rule of law is the bedrock of Kenya's quest to, for prosperity consistent and fair application of the law builds trust, encourages civic responsibility, and fosters social cohesion. By championing a jurisprudence that simultaneously upholds fundamental rights and freedoms while supporting development, the Supreme Court helps Kenya achieve Vision 2030 and also our bottom-up economic transformation agenda. I congratulate the court on its 12th years of steadfast growth, and without a doubt, it has now matured into a respected constitutional authority and fountain of progressive jurisprudence. I encourage the court to sustain its progress and become a global beacon of judicial wisdom, constitutional clarity, and foster developmental dynamism. May this conference inspire deeper reflection and introspection on the Supreme Court's role in national transformation and energize all participants in their pursuit of a more just 
and equitable Kenya. And let me commit, as I did, to the leadership of the judiciary, that the executive, we will play our role, we will support the judiciary within the constraints that we have um, in our finances. We will go out of our way to support the requests that have been made by the judiciary on matters to do with um, enabling our uh, judicial officers to be um, uh, to work in a much more enabled environment and to also provide the physical facilities necessary. And I'm very happy that the governor of Nairobi has agreed that we will work together to make sure that there is a new place for the judiciary and for the Supreme Court. Asante Nisana, God bless you. God bless our great country, Kenya. Thank you very much. Another round of applause for His Excellency. And with your permission, Your Excellency, we'll have the national anthem to wind up. Then after that, we'll have a very brief photo session just outside by the stairs. So I'll request that after the national anthem, we kindly hold our positions until directed otherwise. But for now, the national anthem. I request that we kindly take our seats as His Excellency exits.